Meet George. George is an echidna. George had the perfect life until some idiot put stiff stay equine mesh in his way. Not even George can get through. Have a look at how he burrows through this old fence wire on the neighbour's place. And that got me to thinking. If George can push through that, I reckon he can push through a wombat gate and I can keep everyone happy. So this week's project is about setting up a wombat gate for an echidna in a horse fence. Are you confused yet? I was too. Let's get going. <laughs> First, to the construction of the gate. I had some heavy angle lying around, a bit of old galvanised pipe, and a length of rod, and I thought this could be the foundation for the Wombat Gate. I got the design off the Department of Natural Resources and Environment website in Tasmania. There's an academic over there who's been doing a whole heap of studies on wildlife impacts of fencing, and he reckons that this is a perfect solution for wombats. I'm thinking it might actually be a solution for George the Echidna as well. So I laid out the angle into a square. I cut according to the Tasmanian guidelines, 35 centimetres by 35 centimetres. I used the mesh mat as my square to get frame right. And I tell you what, having a good quality welder finally, it makes this sort of stuff so much fun. If you guys don't have a gasless MIG yet, my goodness you need to get one. So I welded up the frame, I was even able to tack on the mat bed, I cut the pipe to length, that was fun. And then I welded the pipe on using, well, I don't think you could call it a jig, but it worked. Then came time to fit the axle and the tabs to attach to my stock post steel posts. They're the things that I'm going to ram into the ground. <laughs> Now it just so happens this weighs about three kilos. What they found in the Tasmanian trials is that the weight of the wombat gate either excludes or allows in different species. If your gate is at least three kilos, those pesky wallabies won't come in and eat all your plants, but wombats will be able to get through the hole, echidnas will be able to get through the hole, and your fence is not gonna cause unnecessary death or be destroyed by the critters. I'm gonna paint this, we'll let it dry, and then I'm gonna go out, we'll put a couple of stock posts in the ground, and we'll use these two tabs here to mount it. Job's done. So I'm at the spot where I've seen the echidna trying to get through the fence. And from here, he walks up along the fence line towards a road that's a few hundred meters away in that direction. And that's not ideal. We don't want echidna squasho. So what we're gonna try and do is use a couple of stock posts. We're gonna drive them into the ground to make the uprights to hang the gate off. We're gonna drive them into the second red mark so that they're nice and deep in the ground and basically 35 centimetres is down to the next red mark there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to hang the wombat gate off the holes in the stock posts. Theory goes, it should be really simple and easy to set up. Let's see how we go. Now I'm deliberately leaving the second one a couple of inches higher because I've got a slope here. I don't want the gate in an angle. So once I've dug the hole and I've found the mounting point, I'll give this a couple of extra taps and get the gate exactly level. So that's about the right height there for that hole. All I've got to do is bang that post down about an inch and it'll match up to that pole and it'll be in the right position to swing either way. I've got to extend the hole a little bit and bring it up on a gradual slope on either side but it looks like we're nearly there. Now like many of you I've been around properties long enough to be an eternal optimist and while I was digging this hole on a 32 degree day I was thinking of all the negatives. I was thinking about 
you know, wombats cause a lot of a lot of damage to dams and to rivers. Why do you want to encourage them on the place? This is not encouraging them. You put this in existing wombat pathways so they don't damage your very expensive fencing and infrastructure. I was thinking to myself, what if livestock steps in this hole and breaks their leg? So obviously I'm going to be covering this. I've got sheep here, so I'm going to be covering this with pallet timbers. Um, if I had cattle or horses, much heavier animals, I'd be looking for, you know, some sleeper timber or something like that and I'd be pegging it into the ground so that they don't step on it and go obviously into a hole. I was thinking about what about rabbits? But with all the, with all the wildlife moving through here it would be very unusual for rabbits to burrow in here and if they did I tell you what I'd be the first person to rip this damn thing out of the ground and fill in the hole and go shoot some bunnies. This is to try and look after some nat natural wildlife and some native wildlife that I've interrupted with the fence and I want to thank White's Rural for supplying the weld mesh and some fantastic fencing to improve my property and my management of it. What we're doing now is we're working with our management tools to try and look after native species who are in their right habitat and let them carry on with their lives despite our activities. So that's what this wombat gate's all about. I'm going to set this up, pound this post in, hook it up and then last but not least I'm going to stick a trail camera up and see if I can capture some images of some wildlife using it. If I do catch those images I'll post them on my Facebook and Instagram feeds so if you're not already a subscriber to them head on over to Facebook and Instagram there's links on my website click up get on to me and if there's any movement in this hole that's positive I'll share it with you and if there's any movement in this hole that's negative likewise I'll share it with you. I haven't tried this idea out before um, I can think of a million reasons why it won't work but I'm also optimistic enough to try and think of a few reasons why it will and try and improve my farming techniques to work in with nature rather than go against it. And that's what smart farmers do after all, isn't it? All right, time to stop gas bagging, get on with digging the hole. We'll set this baby up, set up the trail camera and we'll leave it at that. What can I say? Bringing out my inner wombat. Hopefully now the little echidna doesn't have to walk up and down the fence line cursing me to this fantastic fence that keeps out everything. Now we're letting in what we want, hopefully. Don't forget guys, I'm not claiming that this is a solution for everyone. In some places, wombats are an absolute pest. That's not the case here, and this is actually being done for an echidna named George. And I hope George is happy with his new hole. Don't forget guys, if you like this kind of content, help the channel stay alive by pressing the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and there's plenty more content like this and more on timthompson.ag. I'll see you next week.